The Web Audio API can use several different sources of audio, not just the inbuilt oscillator node. Now, this video is going to show you how to take HTML5 native audio and video elements and run them through the Web Audio API's node graph in order to apply some cool processing effects like filtering, delay, or reverb. Now, HTML5 brought along the audio and video tags, which allow us to embed audio or video content into our HTML. What we can do with the Web Audio API is we can grab these elements in our JavaScript and we can turn them into audio source nodes. By turning it into an audio source node, we can then take that audio source and run it through any other processing node, like an EQ or a filter or a gain node, for example. So let's get started and do just that. The first thing we want to do in our HTML file is we want to create an audio tag. So let's go ahead and do that. And the audio tag has a source attribute. And we need to direct that source attribute to the actual audio file on our hard drive that we want to use. So here I have a folder that I made called audio. And in it, I have the track that I want to use, which I call descriptively track1.mp3. This is one of my own tracks, by the way. You can see how much I like colorful names. So let's set our source attribute on the audio tag to that track in the audio directory. So we can say audio, which is the folder, and then track one.mp3. Save the file. And let's take a look in the browser so far. Well, yeah, we don't see anything. And that's because there's another attribute which we can put on the audio tag, and that's called controls. Now let's save the file, take a look back in the browser, and here's what we got. We got some nice controls already created for us. Play and pause button here, volume control, and some other things as well. And here we see the length of this particular track, which is 1 minute and 20 seconds. Now just so you know, simply by adding the attribute controls here, that's basically like a Boolean value, so you can think of it like controls equals true, although we don't need to explicitly set that here. So now I should be able to come into the browser and hit play, and we can just take a listen to what the audio source sounds like right now. So this is all good, but what we really want to do is we want to take this audio source and route it through the Web Audio API's node graph for further processing. So here's how to do it. So in our JavaScript file, we have, as usual, the audio context here set up on line one, and we assigned it to a const, constctx. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to come in here and we want to actually grab that audio element from the DOM. So we can do document dot query selector. We just simply grab the audio tag and let's assign it to let's say const audio element. So cool. Yeah, we got that audio element, but here's where the web audio API connection comes into play. On the context object, we have a method called create media element source. So let's call that method. And let's pass it that audio element that we created. And that audio element, of course, is reference to the audio tag or audio element from our HTML. And let's assign that to a const. We'll call it media element. Now, I'm sure you can think of better names than these here, but these should serve for the sake of the example. Now, I can take this media element and call the connect method on it and route it to the audio context destination or your speakers, let's say. So now if I come up into the browser and hit play, it'll play back just like before. But now we have it set up ready for processing. All right, so this is where we can start applying some of those modification nodes. Now there's a modification node that we can use, which is called the biquad filter. And what a filter allows you to do is, it allows you to filter out certain frequencies from your audio source. And filters are one of those things that are used all the time with synthesizers and music production and mixing in general. So to get access to this node, what we want to do is we want to call create 
by quad filter on the context object and we'll assign it to const filter and then we're going to need to rewire so to speak the path to our audio output or destination and we can do that by taking that media element and first connecting it to the filter so instead of media element dot connect context dot destination we can do media element dot connect filter first and then it's the filter that will be connected to the context dot destination like so so you can see now that the path goes all the way from the media element source which is our audio file through the biquad filter and then finally out to the destination now that we've created and hooked up the filter and all the routing, let's go and tweak the actual frequency value of the filter so we can hear the different effects it can have. Now the intention of this video isn't really to go into all the details of the filter node itself, but just so you know, there are several different filter types that can be used as well as different properties that can be set for the filter. Now the filter type which is the default though is called a low pass filter and this filter is used to attenuate frequencies above a certain cutoff point. The cutoff frequency will be the frequency that we set with the value property on the frequency audio param. As I've talked about in other videos, the general range of human hearing that's typically given is from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So let's try doing something here that's pretty extreme and set the cutoff frequency to be 250 or 250 hertz and this should give a pretty muffled sound since the frequencies above 250 hertz will be attenuated so we can say filter dot frequency dot value equals 250 and now let's come in here and play the track and see if we hear a, a difference it should sound a lot more muffled than before So hopefully you're able to hear that. But to compare, let's set the cutoff frequency now to a value of 20,000 hertz, which should represent the full frequency range of the source audio file, basically. So now you should be able to hear a much fuller sound in terms of frequency range. So let's save it and take a listen again, now with more of a full frequency range. Now let's just try one last one. Let's try about 800 hertz. Let's see if we can hear the difference here. So obviously this is all just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the actual processing that you can do. The point of this video was to demonstrate how you can get access to the audio or video tags from your HTML and then set them up for processing through the Web Audio API's node graph. And even though we didn't try it here, you can do this exact same thing when using a video tag, since a video tag can be turned into a media element source node just the same. So you can just imagine the possibilities of what you can do with your audio sources using all the processing nodes that you now have access to. See you next time.